Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk. So this is probably one of my most favorite aircrafts ever, I would say, because just look how cool it is uh, when you actually look online. And the story of how it was made and came about is, is really fascinating. So there's a lot of documentaries that you can find. So anyway, we're making it in Kerbal Space Program 2. And this was quite a challenge because, you know, in real life, the aircraft is actually, as they say, aerodynamically unstable. And, well, I've inadvertently done the exact same thing in the game. Um, I guess it's partly due to the ridiculous shape, which is really, it's a cool shape, of course, but, and everyone likes the shape, but unfortunately, it's just not aerodynamic. And the drag is just ridiculous on this thing. So I'll just give you some general stats for the aircraft. Um, overall, the thrust to weight is about 2.2. Mass is around 59 tons, which is actually somewhat lightweight. Parts, it's about 153 parts. Um, and so because the craft has very unusual shapes, I've had to adjust the wings everywhere in order to make that particular shape. We, we do have some structural parts, but um, they're kind of like small cubes and triangles, but they, they have like this terrible kind of like grill kind of texture and it, it doesn't look very nice. And so we've had to use wings. And the issue of course with wings is that then you've got all this drag and it thinks you want to use it for lift. Um, so every time I placed a different part in order to match the, the real life Nighthawk shape, um, inadvertently, I was, you know, causing issues with lift and drag, and so I guess I just initially just focused on just making it look as real as I can. And if you actually notice here, um, in real life, the the Nighthawk does have capacity to carry bombs, and so we've got the uh, some fuselages at the bottom there, or cargo bays, and I've left them open. And what you for that. You know, the reason why I've left them open was so that I could have like a, a flat surface on the bottom because the Nighthawk in real life is super flat on the bottom. It looks very, very flat. And so in order to match that, whilst also being able to have bombs in a cargo bay, I've had to use, you know, these kind of open cargo bays. So I've got one cargo bay in the middle and then two on the sides and they're all open. And in order to get the bomb out in the middle, you have to close the outer cargo bay so it's a bit of an unusual one but that's just what we've had to do and so yeah um i did a little test run uh dark gray doesn't look really good because of the i don't know it just doesn't look very good in ksp2 so i've had to make it like pure black or as black as can be and uh, you see here i'm just trying to adjust the angles and you just see how tricky it is to get the front the front took a while and anytime I try to make an adjustment, um, I, I had to make an adjustment for everything else because you move one thing, then you might have, you know, then I made like a space and then unfortunately I had to change the rest of the parts surrounding it. So I did that a lot. I've got around six hours worth of footage of creating this thing. So I don't want to bore you with six hours worth of footage. But so I've just cut it down to the essentials here and just the main parts. Um, and so the wings are, are quite interesting. I, I, whenever you try to adjust and rotate the wings using the tools, sometimes you can kind of use, you, you press shift on the keyboard and do this like fine tune movement, but it doesn't always seem to work, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but regardless, it, it ended up working in the end. And you see here how it looks. It's just like, it actually starts to look really, really cool. Um, I'm quite proud of it. I did have to change it a few times because I found that some wings were a little bit too long um, hidden on the inside. And because the wings were long on the inside, that was kind of causing unnecessary drag and just mucking around with the lift too much. So I've had to reduce that greatly. And well, here we are just continually changing the angles once again. It's just... A very exciting process. Um, I'm actually quite curious to see how the Kerbals look in this once again because the cockpit there or the command pod is a little bit angled. So here we go. This is not the first flight. This is like after who knows how many flights. Um, I recommend that you immediately lift off when you can. So as soon as you see the aerodynamic effects like now, that's when you need to lift off because this thing will start to swerve. So you can see the lift is fantastic. We've got, let's see, I believe, what is that? 10 engines, 10 whiplash engines. 
which is way more than necessary but unfortunately as i said the drag is just ridiculous on this thing so in, you know in real life apparently pilots had difficulty keeping this up in the air and so i had the same issue in Kerbal space program so you know this is very realistic um and so sas as well on this uh, automatic control is terrible don't use sas do not rely on it you're gonna have to use manual control and um yeah, as long as you do that and just like every now and then just continually press the keys on the keyboard just to keep it stable it will remain stable and you see here at the bottom we're going to open up the cargo you know bay and well we have to open up the outer ones first that's the only way to open up the inner cargo bay, as I mentioned earlier on. So as you can see, it does look, you know, very flat. And so this is a little trick. If you want to have something flat, you got to have cargo bays in line in order to, you know, do a little surprise thing. So, and you see here, um, I actually re recommend that you press pause when you do this, because uh, just in case, because, you know, if you just uh, forget to press the the keys and just to keep your craft stable it might just suddenly start to tumble and so you see the bombs two bombs inside small bombs and they eject perfectly in fact during my first uh, test it worked out really well which I was a bit surprised about because I was testing around with bombs and missiles and sometimes when you eject them things don't work out too well and well <laughs> as you can see here well we've kind of lost control unfortunately um and, and every time you crash there's like a about a 10 to 15 second delay by the time you actually see the next you know effects of the explosion and everything and what, what, what a nice little visual there look at that the wings flying all over the place very very strange and anyway here's another test you know seeing how the bombs go and i love how perfectly straight they go it's uh unfortunately though you know you can't really have uh, explosives in them so that's, uh, that would be nice, maybe I'll make a suggestion, but this isn't Kerbal Explosive Program, or, although it kind of is in a way, right? Um, just look at the Kerbal, the Kerbals actually have like these new modern day sunglasses as well. <laughs> the wings are actually poking through their eyes, it's a bit dangerous actually. So <laughs> he, he's a little bit blind, but well, Bill, Bill, that's, that's how it is with the Nighthawk, you just, uh, it's stealthy, right? So you're not going to be able to see anything. <laughs> so it's, it's very realistic of course and here we are just uh, steadily losing control unfortunately it just happens you know this craft as I said is pretty lightweight and with the low amount of fuel you would think it would go faster but again drag is just insane so I will make this available for download in the description so you can test that yourself if you like um, I am curious how it's going to work in the future after a few updates with um, any changes to physics. But apparently the Nighthawk can also swim. So it's like a, a new Kerbal Space Program feature of the real life thing. And I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Take care.